Humanity's own creation, the internet, has wrapped us in a torrent of hope, connection, torment, and woe. It is both a conduit for our potential and an amplifier of the more insidious aspects of our nature. With every new app, every sensor, every new link to those we follow or hate, our connections grow stronger, deeper, and more dangerous. We've entered an entirely new realm, one in which we meticulously fabricate what our life looks like online, all the while struggling to adapt to the physical world. Yet at the same time, positive change can come from the tribes and friendships made online. It all started with an arcade video game that brought people together. Then, the computers came home. Soon, all of humankind was connected by six degrees. Meeting people became less intimidating. We then started vlogging and posting videos of cats doing weird things. Hitting like on everything, our self-confidence was on the rise. Tired of using 5,000 characters to document our every move, we condensed it to 140 characters, thinking with less words we could communicate better. Realizing we were the product, we then wanted a way for the information we shared to disappear within 24 hours. The perpetual motion engagement machine was still grinding in the background. We started checking our devices 142 minutes a day. Algorithms were supposed to bring the content we needed and craved to the top of our feeds. Initially dismissed as a pretty crazy idea, Facebook finally came clean. Russians, using false identities, had paid for 3,000 Facebook ads that sent pro-Trump messages to Americans before and after the election. By some estimates, between 146 and 150 million users, more people than voted, had seen posts from accounts linked to the Internet Research Agency, a pro-Kremlin organization. Now we stand deliberating over the reality of what permeates the internet. When we open our Pandora's box, we do so knowing our words, our messages, our thoughts can be delivered to the world with one tap of a button.